Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is draft week, and finally, we'll actually have some good news for the Dallas Cowboys. We'll actually be adding some players. Primo players, I know we've all been disappointed through free agency. We've all been hoping, praying, and wanting to get more players, but Stephen Jones just is not going to do that. We just know. I I don't know why we get all excited and hyped up and think that this year is going to be the year. It's never going to be the year with Stephen Jones. Stephen Jones is set in his ways and believes that he knows it all, and unfortunately, he doesn't just doesn't but it is what it is in the meantime and in between time we're trying to speculate what the dallas cowboys are going to do you know we heard rumors of course that the cowboys are getting interested in Kayvon uh, tribino and if he falls that the cowboys could move up and try and get him but i'm personally one of those guys that i'm not crazy about the idea of taking multiple picks when we have as many holes as especially if we're talking about a first and a second. It didn't work out well for us with Morris Claiborne. I will say that the Cowboys have been better suited when they've moved back. When you look at Travis Frederick, they ended up doing kind of the philosophy that I kind of look at and say, there's certain positions there's going to be runs on. You know, you've got all your top prospects in every category, edge rusher, you know, offensive tackle, interior defensive linemen, quarterbacks, and so on. You know that, Left tackles are premium. You know edge rushers are premium. You know that wide receivers and quarterbacks are premiums. So by the time you get to 24, the Cowboys don't have, you know, the top prospect in any of those positions. You're dealing with the third, fourth, fifth, maybe even the sixth best guy at that point. When the Cowboys in 2013 moved back and ended up taking Travis Frederick, People are like, you can always get a center in the second uh, second round. How, why would the Cowboys do something like that? Well, he was the number one interior offensive lineman. You got a stud at that position. Had the Cowboys taken what was left there, an edge rusher or you know wide receiver or quarterback, probably wouldn't have done as well. So you look at it from the standpoint of saying, with a draft that's loaded with linemen, and knowing that you have a need on defensive line as well as offensive line, it could behoove you to move back. Now, here's something that actually may bluster the idea on this. This draft, to me, trading up, I'm not sure that there's really guys that you look at as the number one guy, a guy that you have to get. Jacksonville has said, basically, we're willing to trade the number one pick, but I'm not sure anybody's going to trade for him because there's no consensus guy that you say, you know, that's an Andrew Luck. you got to go up and get him. So I think that you're going to see a lot less movement up into the front half of the draft. But I think you'll see people that will trade back into the first round for a couple of reasons. One being first round draft picks, you get that fifth year option. So instead of going up real high and getting a guy where you're going to be paying tons and tons of money, if you can still get that quarterback, if you see a quarterback that's there, that may be a guy that you want if you can get him in the first round as opposed to the second round, you actually get an extra year. You follow me? Because of the fifth-year option. This was actually blustered by the NFL Network this morning, Tom Passero. Let me play this clip because this is quite interesting to say the least. We were promised 3.55 a.m. local time that those fountains would light up. Indeed, on the dot, they got them live just five minutes before this show began. You can see the scene behind me here, of course. You've got Caesars, the Bellagio's just off camera, those fountains right in front. Down by the fountains is where the players are going to arrive on Thursday night. And then back over here in the distance beyond Bally's and the Flamingo, you see that purple semicircle up there that's the observation wheel the high roller underneath that's the main draft theater the stage the green room where the players will be on thursday night a lot of fun ahead and it's now just three days away guys wow tom I, we got to talk about these quarterbacks we've got matt castle here on the show and in the first hour we're doing flips talking about them all but the here that we're hearing is that this isn't the same quarterback class 
as last year. So what do you think happens and how many do you think actually come off the board in round one? Peter, there's not that clear-cut front-line guy. There's not a Trevor Lawrence or even a Kyler Murray who's emerged as the clear number one overall pick. But certainly, there's a lot of developmental talent, and who people like depends on who you talk to. Let's start out with Malik Willis from Liberty. He's the guy that multiple coaches told me is the only quarterback in this class with true NFL traits because of the big arm, the running ability. He played in a simplistic offense at Liberty, like some of these other quarterbacks did, but certainly they feel like this is a guy who's going to be able to learn. He's got the upside. If you need somebody to play right now, it's Pitts Kenny Pickett. But the question on him is just the arm talent, whether or not you've got that elite trait that you can fall back upon, whether he's going to get a whole lot better than he was last season when he had an awfully good breakout season. Then late in round one, several general managers I've spoken to in the past few days believe we could get a run on some of those other quarterbacks, whether it's Desmond Ritter, Sam Howell, maybe even Matt Corral. There's a couple of factors here. For one, there's a bunch of teams at the top of the second round that all need a quarterback. If you move into the first, not only do you leapfrog the Lions, who are a threat to take one at number 32, but you also get the financial advantages of having the fifth-year option. If you've identified one of those guys and they slip to an area you think you can go get them, it would not surprise anybody if we see one or more trades back into the first to grab a QB, guys. That's an interesting take, and that could be the reason why that the Dallas Cowboys could have a trading partner into um, a day one. And I'm not going to say that this would be an awful thing, not at all. In fact, I think that this would actually be a good thing. I think you can still get yourself a really great guard if you know you're talking about moving slightly back. If it's actually moving into the second round, you could be talking about getting, um, you know, swapping first round picks, getting a second round pick, and maybe a third round pick for somebody to do that. And if you get an opportunity to do that, where you can take that one, turn it into multiple picks, that's one of those things that you you definitely look into because. Um, you know, if you're talking about moving two spots, you're talking about, you know, a number three pick. If you're talking about somebody that needs to move up, like, say, 10 spots, then you're talking about a first and a second to do that. And if you're really talking about somebody moving up maybe 15 spots or so, you could be talking about, you know, number one and a number one, you know, the following year for somebody to get back possibly into that position. So, you know, don't discount it. And if the Cowboys can get plenty of capital and still not be that far away, it might behoove them because then you say, okay, we're not going to be getting, you know, the edge rusher that, that maybe we wanted, but we'll get a really great guard. We'll be able to get like a premier defensive interior guy. These are positions where they're not picked in first rounds very much. You might be able to say, hey, we can get, you know, two number twos and a third, you know, two thirds. Now, all of a sudden, we look at it and say we get a guard, we get a tight end, we get a wide receiver, and we get a defensive tackle in the first three rounds. So this is where you have to look at, and, of course, we have Stephen Jones, who's Mr. Value Pick and all that. You could look at this and say, that might not be the worst case scenario for the Cowboys in a draft that you are told that you'll be able to get really good wide receivers all the way into the third round, where you're told it's deep on the offensive line, it's deep on the defensive line. These are positions that aren't glamorous, that everybody goes through. They're not the big splash moves, but the big splash moves aren't always the ones that end up getting you those Super Bowls. We've seen so many teams that have traded up to be the team that gets that guy to only find out the ones that have been on the other end of it are the ones that their team has been built better. And so with that being said, that's all we've got right now for you guys. Everybody is right now kind of in the bunker, so to speak, and trying to get their final strategies down, trying to get their final draft uh, boards together and, and figure out exactly what's going on so you probably won't see much of anything. We know that um, the Carolina Panthers said they won't be trading for Baker Mayfield um, before the draft. They're going to let the draft play out and see what happens in there. Um, so it's going to be a quiet week until Thursday when all hell breaks loose. And, of course, make sure you're here for our draft coverage starting, of course, on Thursday night. We'll have a uh, full house here. We'll have a 
DMV will be in Vegas having updates for us. And, of course, we will be keeping an eye on Philly 500 and Cop Pizzle and Rio and all of those great guys. We will be doing it live. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you later. Us today, and we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting.